My name is Jason Harper. I'm an electrical engineer at Argonne National Laboratory. I work in the Vehicle Systems Group. Today I'll be, I'll be talking about the uh, SAE DC fast charging standards and implementing them here at Argonne National Laboratory. So going over DC fast charging, the basic premise is typically AC level 1, level 2 charging is controlled basically by the, the ampacity of the EVSE and the onboard charger. So typical recharge rates, depending on the battery state of charge, can range from anywhere from 4 to 8 hours. So with DC fast charging, what we can do is bypass that onboard charger, pull the charger off, off board, increase the power size, and that decreases our charge rate because we can then push more power, higher values into the battery faster. So here's the SAE J1772 interface. Shown here is the, the standard connector. It's a five pin connector. This is the inlet that would be on a vehicle. This inlet is capable of AC level one, level two charging, as well as DC level one charging. Now we can go at DC level one up to 80 amps DC. For higher power levels, the SAE Hybrid Task Force Committee has come up with the combo connector. So we have two extended pits here that allow faster charge rates at up to 200 amps DC. Now since DC fast charging involves actually communicating with an off-board charger, the SAE Hybrid Task Force Committee has come up with a way to communicate with the off-board charger. So what they've implemented is a technology known as power line communication. The specific technology is home plug green five. So shown here is a typical pulse width modulated square wave that would be seen on the pilot wire. This noise here in the time domain is actually that digital broadband signal known as home plug green five. And that is the way that the car communicates with the, with the EVSC and vice versa. So going over uh, the, the setup of a typical DC charging session, we have a block diagram here. So shown in the, the plug-in electric vehicle, you have the EVCC, also known as the Electric Vehicle Communication Controller. The SECC, known as the Supply Equipment Communication Controller, res resides in the DC EVSC. They communicate over broadband power line communication on the control pilot. So ultimately, the battery energy control module is communicating with the power control module in the EVSE and supplying DC power over the core extended pins. At Argon, we developed our own communication controller shown here. Now, within software, we've implemented the SAE J2847-2 standard. So this is the protocol stack. It's based on the seven layer OSI model, starting from layer one, the physical layer, or the home plug green five uh, physical layer, all the way up to the application layer the J2847-2 messages. So with this specific controller, we can actually emulate a supply equipment communication controller, also an electric vehicle communication controller. So we have RS-232, serial communication, USB, Ethernet, and then in this Deutsch connector, we actually have CAN, RS-232, access to the pilot line, proximity line, we have the temperature sense, and also the coupler lock. Shown here is the SAE DC communication session overview. There's six distinct phases, starting with disconnected, all the way through initialization, isolation monitoring, pre-charge. Then we get into the energy transfer phase where the, the battery is actually charged. We go into shutdown and then disconnect. So each one of these bolded lines are actually request response messages that the electric vehicle communication controller sends to the supply commu communication controller. And a session, a DC charging session is performed. So let's talk about the specific hardware and software implementation that we have here at Argonne National Laboratory. This is an ABC 170 power processing system. It's a dual channel power supply where channel A and channel B can sync or source power. So in this specific setup, channel A is our simulated or emulated DC EVSE, which is uh, placed in current mode. Channel B is our emulated plug-in electric vehicle battery placed in voltage mode. So I can basically emulate any type of uh, battery chemistry as well as charge profile on channel B, and I request current or voltage from channel A. Coming off channel A and channel B, we actually have the two orange, orange wires coming into these Anderson connectors. We then convert channel A to the J1772 combo connector. So we're actually transferring power on the two extended pins. Channel B is the PEV inlet. This is again, the SAE combo connector inlet. DC power on the two extended pins, proximity, ground, and pilot. So over here is, is the, the monitor that I'm using. Within this, this enclosure are the two communication controllers, an SECC and EVCC. During the whole communication session process, the electric vehicle always requests messages, the supply equipment communication controller responds to those requests. Let's start an SAE DC charging session.
So this is uh, two terminal windows. On the left here we have the supply equipment communication controller terminal. On the right we have the electric vehicle communication controller terminal. So I've set, I've set up the communication controllers in debug mode where I can step through each individual process and each individual message. So what we'll show here is, is sending the request and response pair and actually show a DC charging session. So starting off, the first process is, is plugging in the inlet and then we go into what's called the SECC discovery process. We find the server, the EVCC connects to the server and now we can start the first actual message which is the initialization phase, we do a handshake request. It's successful, we move on to session setup re request response pair. Moving on to service discovery request response pair. That then leads into the service selection payment request. Then the contract authentication request. Charge parameter discovery request response. Then the PEV asks the EVSE to do a cable check. If everything's okay, then the PEV would then ask the EVSE to pre-charge its output. What this does is actually uh, pre-charges the EVC output so there's not an inrush of current when the PEV closes its internal contactors. So channel A just uh, was, was actually enabled. Now we, the PEV would make sure that that was at the right voltage. It is. So then the PEV would close its contactors. Then it, the PEV would ask the EVC to enable its output and a charge session would, would begin. So sh shown here we are in the energy transfer stage. On the right is the plug-in electric vehicle terminal. We can see that we are sending a request to the EVSE. The EVSE is, re is responding. Here's just a little information for the, uh, the, the driver of the vehicle. We have charge end time, which basically what this is emulating is a 20 kilowatt hour pack at 20% state of charge. We're charging to 80%, and with the current uh, actual current profile that had programmed, this would, this would um, be done in 15 minutes. So currently I'm requesting about 148 amps. I, I integrate amp hours and kilowatt hours, and then I also keep track of the battery state of charge. And that information is actually sent to the, PV, to the EVSC via the control pilot here. So we can see charge end time, the PEV state of charge, and the current request from the vehicle. This will run for 15 minutes, but just to simulate uh, and speed this up, we'll actually stop the charge session. So typically the, the connector would be locked, but I've added safety control, so if it isn't and you actually try to remove that inlet, it'll shut down the charge session. So the vehicle saw a, a, a pilot error. It's then gonna ask the EVSE to, to, to um, disable its output. It does a welding detection, and then it shuts down the session. The ultimate goal of this work and this specific test tool is to enable interoperability. The end goal is to have a driver pull up to an SAE DC fast charger, be able to plug in their vehicle and know that it's interoperable and it's going to charge.